Association member of the Jewish community here. Um, I got the idea to do an exhibit featuring a century of Jewish life in Biddeford, Saco, um, as a way to celebrate our milestone 100th anniversary of the congregation. Um, the exhibit consists of six aspects of the history of the community, including the history of the synagogue, of Hebrew education, emigration to Biddeford Saco prior to 1915, um, community life, uh, Jewish owned businesses of the area, and local chapters of national Jewish organizations. Well, the exhibit starts here um, with the introduction. And um, the first main aspect is the section on congregation at Schaim. Um, we see the transformation over the years of the synagogue building. Uh, the first photo is in 1908 when the bell tower was still part of the building because it was built in 1874 as an Episcopal church. The second photo is from 1955, and uh, this third one is the current photo from 2006, and you can see that um, a handicapped accessible entryway was added. It was added in 2001. Um, this is an interesting um, constitution that was found in a minute book from the board of directors of the synagogue. Um, the book covered the minutes from the incorporation of the congregation in 1907 and went through about 1929. And I uh, um, transcribed the constitution verbatim um, so you can get a flavor of the limited command of English um, that the immigrants had. We have um, bylaws, and this is actually the petition for incorporation uh, signed by 10 men in 1907. And this document um, has the signatures of everyone who was in attendance at the mortgage burning party that was held in 1939, March 19th of 39. Uh, these boards uh, just show the original trustees of the Hebrew congregation of Biddeford, which is what the congregation went by before it was incorporated. Um, so it was just called the Hebrew congregation of Biddeford, organized in 1892. In 1907, when it incorporated, it became uh, the Biddeford Hebrew Synagogue Association, and it was in 1910 that it was renamed the Congregation at Chaim, reportedly in honor of um, Chaim Gudkowski, who was one of the uh, first Jews in Biddeford. This is a list of spiritual leaders of Congregation at Chaim, the last full-time rabbi to leave um, that we had left in 1967, Boris Gottlieb. And in these cases, we have some uh, ceremonial and religious objects from the synagogue. These are the finial crowns uh, that sit on top of over the Torah poles that jingle when the Torah is taken out of the ark, which is a signal to people to stand up because the Torah is being moved. And the same principle here with the breastplate. Um, there's a spice box and a megillah, a lulav, some yods, and this shofar was given to the congregation um, 
by the State of Israel Bonds Department for um, the congregation's dedication and outstanding achievement in the high holiday effort of the year 5718, which corresponds with 1949. This is Rabbi Nathanson, who was congregation at Chaim Spiritual Leader from 1936 to 1945. This is the president of Et Chaim, and it's not a complete list, I'm sure, but it's what I was able to piece together with the information that was available to me. I came across something that listed the committees of the Ladies Auxiliary, which was um, a group of women who held office. They were the, the female, um, equivalent, I guess, of the officers of the congregation. Um, and they had committees such as the Sunshine Committee, um, which I'm imagining is probably visiting people in the hospital or cheering up people who were sick. Um, we have some old newspaper clippings from some of the important um, celebrations such as uh, this was the first joint installation of the male officers and the female officers. Um, this was at the 50th anniversary, the banquet that was held, and uh, Israel's 10th anniversary banquet. This is a portrait of uh, rabbi Gottlieb, who I mentioned before, was the last rabbi that Ezraim had. And this picture shows a visiting scribe who is um, repairing a Torah. And uh, Rabbi Gottlieb is looking on with other members of the congregation. What year did that happen? That was in, that was June 20th of 1966. And when did Rabbi Gottlieb leave? He left in 67. Do you know why he left? Um, I have been told that his primary reason for leaving was that he felt that there was a very good chance that his children would intermarry if he stayed here. Um, and so he moved to New York. And this is an award. Um, presented to the Jewish community of Biddeford Sacco by the United Jewish Appeal, um, given to the community for its effort to raise money for Israel in the Six Day War for their emergency fund. So in a nutshell, that's the section on the synagogue. You can go in here. We have two display cases devoted to the, uh, the Jewish-owned businesses of Biddeford and Sacco. Um, the Palakowicz family had many businesses. They were primarily in the clothing business. Um, the Zaitlin family was in the junk business. They owned Sacco Junk, which then became Sacco Steel. Um, this board on the back left shows various advertisements that were in Biddeford City directories. Uh, the Shapiro family had um, a business that started off as a radiator repair shop and went through many transformations over the years and is now Union Oil, uh, of which Arnold Shapiro is the president and Arnold Shapiro was the president of the congregation. Um, in the center, there is a crate from York Bottling with a York Bottling bottle, and York Bottling was run by the Cohen family, started up by Julius and Celia Cohen. In this case, um, we have a series of maps in um, that, that depict the uh, 
waxing and waning of Jewish businesses in downtown Biddeford. And you can see that it peaked in about 1950. And um, the chart has all of the businesses listed and when they came into being and their addresses and so forth. Um, there are some photos in the corner of Eli the Cobbler's shoe store, um, taken over by his son Paul and daughter-in-law Lucille. There's a sketch of Toby's restaurant, uh, Feinberg's clothing sign, a photo from uh, the Rubin Agency opening at their new location. The Columbia Hotel, which was owned my, by my great-grandparents. Um, and here's a section on the fires that plagued Jewish businesses in Biddeford. Um, there was a major fire in 1969 that um, damaged several Jewish businesses that were clustered together. Um, and there are uh, in the back of this side wall there's a little section on the Jewish professionals there's an ad from the city directory um, from the Biddeford Saco Chamber of Commerce and it lists Maurice Sandler as the president and we believe that he was the first Jewish president of the chamber um, there's a picture of Dr. Alvin Aaron, my great uncle, and Dr. Carl Haas um, giving checkups to school children. Um, the, this case is on the chapters of national Jewish organizations, chapters that were in Biddeford Saco. Um, there was an AZA chapter, Aleph Zadig Aleph. Um, which was a teenage boys division of B'nai B'rith. And B'nai B'rith was uh, basically a service organization for men. Um, in 1939, a group of teenage girls from Congregation Etz Chaim decided to start um, a junior league of the women's auxiliary of B'nai B'rith. So that was the counterpart to AZA. Um, we have a letter that was sent to my great uncle Alex Aranovich from B'nai B'rith when he first joined. And it says that, um, that he gets a, a customary gift of five dollars for joining um, but rather than give him the money he simply could go to any store in the city um, and the cost would be covered which says something about the businesses <laughs> of the time um, we've got the charter members of B'nai B'rith as well as the presidents chronologically up through 1955 and um, this rummage sale sign was from the rummage sales that Hadassah, the local chapter of Hadassah, which is the women's Zionist organization, they did many fundraising activities, uh, raising money for Israel. And one of their uh, big fundraising events were rummage sales. And they used um, vacant store vacant stores in, in Biddeford, the um, owner of the building would give them permission to um, put secondhand clothing, secondhand household goods there, and everyone from the two cities would, uh, a lot of people would be lined up hours before the doors opened because there was a reputation that um, the Jews had really nice clothing. <laughs> And there's also the uh, Jewish War Veterans Post. Um, it was called the Osher Edelstein Post um, of the National Jewish War Veterans of the United States. And this 
uh, document here on the right is uh, the Biddeford Saco Zionist district. Um, I'm not exactly sure what they were, if this was their charter. I think it may have been. It's signed by um, many people, so I'm thinking it was probably uh, members signing on to, to charter this uh, organization. And this little section here is um, featuring a program that Hadassah put on um, in 1958 to, um, to pay tribute to my great grandmother for all of her dedication to the synagogue over the years. And her favorite TV show at the time was um, this, this Is Your Life. So they staged a This Is Your Life show in the vestry of the synagogue. Um, and she was revealed as the mystery guest. <laughs> and this section here is on community life. Um, there's a subsection here on Jewish war veterans. Um, there's a photograph here of Rabbi Gottlieb and his wife at a function at Es Chaim. Um, the Gottliebs also took um, took a group of young people on a trip to Brandeis University uh, to expose them to Brandeis being a, a Jewish university and so there are photographs from that trip. Uh, this wall has various um, pictures of local families uh, celebrating Passover. In the center here, we have a Biddeford High School graduation program from 1910 showing two Jewish students. Um, and next to it is a photograph, a 1927 photograph of the Amory Grammar School uh, baseball team in Biddeford, uh, boys in grades six to nine, and they won the championship in Biddeford beating um, the, beating all the parochial schools. And um, I thought this photograph was interesting because it shows that at that time, uh, the students of different ethnic backgrounds could find common ground and come together um, through activities like sports. But you still see clusters, um, that, the, that the kids tend to cluster together by ethnicity. Um, the Greek kids stand together and the Jewish kids stand together. Um, and the, the three Jewish kids in the photograph um, are Sam Cohen, Ivan Aranovich, who is my grandfather, and Arthur Stern, um, who is the son of Benjamin Stern, who was a uh, state legislator. This is um, a chalif, or a kosher slaughtering knife. Um, and it was used by a Biddeford shalchit, or slaughterer, um, and he gave it to my great-grandmother for some reason, and so it's been passed down to me. And if you look carefully, um, about seven inches from the top of the, the handle, um, scratched into the blade is a Jewish star. And around this corner, community life continues with a section on weddings. And uh, this was a fun thing to research. It's um, the marriages between Biddeford Sacco's Jewish families. Just taking a look at how the old families here seem to be all related to each other. And this section is on Hebrew education over the years. Um, on the wall, there are some photographs from uh, the Hebrew school and the Sunday school, um, which has been revitalized um, since the late 1980s. These pictures are of um, teens who are in the teen class which is post-bar or bus mitzvah. Um, 
on their trip to New York City, which has become an annual tradition. Um, over here, there's a photograph of Sarah Rubin at her 1993 bat mitzvah, and she was the first at Chaim trained student to have a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah in 30 years. Half of the case, anyway, has a lot of information on the very first bas mitzvah that was held at Congregation at Chaim. Um, it was an Orthodox congregation at the time, and so only boys were allowed uh, the privilege of this coming of age ceremony. But in 1956, um, under Rabbi Gottlieb, um, five 13 year old girls who were in the same Hebrew school class were allowed to have a group bas mitzvah. Um, it was not an egalitarian bas mitzvah because they were not allowed to read from the Torah, but it was one step towards being more progressive. And we have photos of the bas mitzvah girls and a newspaper write-up, an original invitation to the event, and an original program. And the girls were presented with gifts, one of which was um, a Bible, and the other was a bracelet, and each bracelet had the recipient's name uh, engraved. This item here is the cover of a Bible. The Bible was presented to uh, Gershon Weinstein, or George Weinstein, in 1940, March 1st of 1940. Rabbi Nathanson was the rabbi at the time, and he inscribed this book with a poem that he wrote for George. Um, no one knows exactly what happened, but uh, someone found this cover in a dumpster in Old Orchard Beach uh, decades later, um, and his name was Her uh, Harold Harrisburg, I believe. And he knew John Nathanson, the son of Rabbi Nathanson, and so he uh, gave this to John, and that's why we have it today. There's a photo of a model Seder from 19, circa 1952, and we have uh, an array of Hebrew school books um, from 1919, 1951, and 1999. And it's interesting just to see how um, the earliest one starts off as being completely in Hebrew. The next one, there's some English. If you were to flip through it, you'd see there are a few, couple black and white photographs. But then um, the more modern one is very bright and colorful. And